Hello and welcome to the cgcookie.com tutorial. My name is Kernan Dillon and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how we can create a magic wand particles effect. Uh, the sort of effect you see when someone might wave a magic wand. Um, this is similar to a pixie dust effect although not so complicated. And this will be a three-part series. In this first part we're going to take a look at how we can create the sprite graphics that will be used in the particle system. So let's get started. Okay, let's take a look at um, what I mean by sprites. Here's a render of some that I created earlier. And we're just going to recreate not the same ones. It's very hard to do that using the, um, the Halo. Uh, materials in Blender, but, and I don't even know if I really like all of these now, I don't care too much for that one anymore. So, that's what we're going to be using in mapping it to billboard particles in Blender. And here's an example of the type of effect that you can get. This isn't exactly what we're going to be doing, uh, but just to demonstrate how we can create the sprites and how they can be mapped onto billboards and then animated using the particle system. Okay, and you can see we're controlling the alpha value so they fade in and out. Alright, this is what I was originally going to do but I decided to do something a little bit more lively and um, so it hopefully will be much better than this. Okay, and let's get to setting up the actual sprites. Now the reason we want to set this up this way is because in Blender when you use billboards, you have to use a UV texture to actually map images onto the actual billboards. And because we want to have multiple particles, you know, have different looking particles, different sprites, we have to create an array or grid of our different sprites that we want. And then we tell Blender the size of the grid and then it will go in and we can tell it to randomly select from any of these images in the grid. And the main thing is just create an image and make sure that everything is in equal distance, equal distance apart. Okay. And that's it as far as where we're going. So let's get to it. We have a cube here as always. I'm going to delete that and go back into a top view by pressing numpad 7 and let's add a plane. And then we'll tab into edit mode and then press the W key and subdivide it and you can see that we now have a graded layout that matches this. And what we're going to do is just apply a halo material and tweak its settings to get the different effects to each one of these vertices. But we can't do it in one object, so while we still have everything selected, let's press the X key and erase edges and faces. Okay? And so we're left with nothing but vertices that are disconnected. And now, with everything still selected, press the P key, and then we want to separate all loose parts. And now we have separate object, objects, each one being a single vertex. Now you notice we have the center point is based on the original plane object, so it's offset, so we need to get all of the center points for the vertices to be centered or you know within the space of the vertex and we'll do that by pressing the B key selecting all of them and then going to the editing buttons window and selecting center new and now everybody has their own center point centered around the actual data which happens to be just a single vertex 
Okay, so with this setup, we're ready to start getting our camera in place so that we can properly frame everything and get a texture at the right size and um, resolution that we want. So let's add a camera by pressing the space bar. Add camera. And have another, cam another camera on another layer. So this camera is not the active camera and you can tell by the the little triangle here and the camera is facing down and we're looking at the scene from the top view so let's make this camera the active camera by pressing control zero and it switches to that camera's view and you can see that now that triangle is filled now let's switch back to the camera view because you can see now that the camera is actually beneath where we have our objects that we just created so we need to move it up and switch to the camera view. Press the G key to move and then the Z key to constrain it to the Z axis and then just pull it back by moving the mouse pointer down. Okay. And we can zoom in with the scroll wheel and that zooms the 3D port, um, not the actual camera. And so now we need to get the camera configured so we have a square graphic when we render. So let's go to the Scene Buttons window. And on the Format panel, set the size to 512 by 512. And since we're here, let's get some other uh, rendering parameters in place. We don't need shadow. We don't need ray tracing. And... It's going to set the output to be RGBA. So we get a color image output with an alpha channel, which we're going to need so that we can have transparent sprites. And set the file format to be PNG. Okay. And let's set the world background color to solid black. Right now it's set to a blend between these two colors. So we will just disable blend and we'll end up with this color here and that's it so now we're ready to actually apply halo materials to each of these objects okay now let's begin creating our actual halo materials we'll select the first one here and well before we do that let's um, box select everything by pressing the B key and select all of them and let's just give them all the same material and we'll call it sprite I'm not actually assigning the same material to each one now I'm just assigning it to the active object which would be the last one that I selected this one but we will be able to link all of the others within the multi-selection to this one. And I'll show you how in just a second. And let's make this a halo. And that's good enough for now. And basically what I want to do right now is to just to see how everything is placed so we can get the actual spacing that we want. So we have an even number, even amount of space around each one. Okay, so with all of them selected, and this being the active object that has the material, you can press Control L and make a link between all of the others in the selection to the active object. So Control L and then select Material. And we do a render. We can see that all of them now have the same material. And let's set this to show our render. Okay, and I press the numpad 1 key to set this to be 100%, uh, like right now it's zoomed in, but if I press 1, it'll show me the actual size. Okay, now with everything still selected, let's press the S key and scale this up a little bit, so about right there, F12 to render. And now we can see that 
if we imagine a line right here and a line right here, the space between these lines and the actual halo, we want it to be about the same over here. And we can see this needs to be a little bit larger, scaled up a little bit larger. So S. Okay. And that's good enough. All right. Now that we've got a base halo material on each one, we then select each one. And we want to make them unique by pressing this button. But since we have nine objects sharing the same material, we'll let this one keep this actual Sprite 1 material, and we'll make all of the others individual materials based on this one. So with this one selected, and we've got our basic Halo set up, let's just add some rings, and I'll press F12, and you can see that adds rings, and you can control the number of rings here. And let's add some lines. I'll press F12. And now we've got a bunch of lines. Let's turn that down a little bit. And let's add a star. Press F12. And you can see we have a bit of a star pattern in the background. And I'm going to set that to, well, let's leave it at 5. And now we can control the color of each one of these elements the color of the actual, the main body of the halo with this. Let's make it a bluish color. Okay. And we can control the color of the lines. Let's make that sort of reddish. And the color of the rings. Maybe something yellowish. Okay. And you can adjust different things that will affect the brightness and get a general idea over here of what you're dealing with. Let's set that to plain. This is really hard to judge by because it's so small you can't really see. So it's best to just do a quick render or you can press Shift P in the 3D view and bring up the preview and do it that way but sometimes you have to uh, press the middle mouse button on it to get it to update so if I make it smaller you can see it didn't update I don't know if that has to do with me recording video but if that ever happens just press the uh, middle mouse button within the preview window and it will update. Okay, so now this is all very tedious and we've got a lot to do here. So I'm not going to go through these one by one. Um, I'll do another one just so you can see um, how you can separate each of these into its own material. Because right now, that, right now they're all the same. So we've got this one set up and let's select this one. And we can see that it's sharing the same material as all the others so we have a number nine here and we want to make this a single user so it's a unique material so we click that number it's actually a button and make it a single user and then let's rename it to sprite 2 and if we just quickly change the color we can see that this one is in fact now different And I want to make it a little bit bigger. And oh, another thing you want to mess around with is the seed value here. This will give you, well, let's look at the tooltip. This will randomize the ring dimension and line locations, these two items here. And it's a good way to get some variation without having to do a whole lot of work. So. And this number goes up to, the seed value goes up to 255. So we can just drag it to anything and press F12 and see we get something interesting. 
and I'm going to leave it at that for now. And so this is how you can go through and do each one. If you decide, let's say you have this one down here, and you want it to be similar to this one, but you don't want to have to go back and redo all these settings, you can select this, the one that you want to uh, to be the target of the new material, and then shift select your actual um, object that has the material that you want to link to this one and then press control L and make a link between the between the materials and if we press F12 you can see that now they're the same and we can also see now that with this selected it's showing us that this material is being shared between two objects and so we want to make this unique so we can tweak it and get something different so again we select this button single user and we'll change the name to sprite 9 so that it corresponds with you know the, the uh, grid placement and make our changes Press F12 to render, and we've got something different. Let's scale it down a little bit. Okay, so that's how you can go through and create uh, your sprite graphics. And I'm going to pause the video and finish these up because it it's a bit tedious to go through all of these. And I'll see you in just a second. Okay, now I'm done with the sprites that we're going to use got them all set up and tried to make them each look pretty unique and uh, cover a nice color range and that's it we're done all we have to do now is just save this again earlier we, we set up our settings here and the only thing you want to do is make sure you come here and set the output size to be 100% to make sure you get the full 512 by 512 and that's it then you can press F3 after you've rendered at 100 percent and then go up here to file save rendered image or you can just press F3 and then save your file wherever you want to and whatever with whatever name you want to give it and that's the end of part one in part two we're going to take a look at creating the actual particle system, setting up the physics that we want, and just getting the basic uh, construction of everything in place before we actually go in and start trying to achieve the, the uh, visual look that we want with the materials. And I'll talk more, talk more about that in part two. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you there.